Hey, hey, BC, Jeff here. It's a nice uh, Monday morning, and I figured I'd take a quick break and uh, tell this little story. Let's call this Story Time with Jeff. Because, you know, there's always a story behind records, and in this case, I just thought it was kind of a funny turnaround. So, over the weekend, I went to this one store that I go to often. It is a uh, one step up from a thrift store in the sense, as far as record selection, literally next door to a Goodwill. So... Somebody's going to go into Goodwill and just give their records away, or they're going to go into this place and maybe get a dollar for them, because the rec this place sells records for $5 a piece. It's flat price, but now if you buy three albums, they're 4 bucks a piece. So, you know, $5 or three for 12 So my mind, when I go in there, it's always, I need to find at least three albums, because I'm not going to spend the extra dollar. So, yeah, you know, you got to have that justification, right? Got to have rules, right? That's my rule. Got to have three. So, I walked in. And I kind of flip through the, they have a section for, you know, things that have recently come in. And then I start going and I'm, I'm in the rock and pop section. And I start at in Z because when you first walk in the door, it, it goes that way. And I'm flipping and I'm flipping. And I see a record when I get to about the M's. I find a record that I'm like, huh, I have nothing by them in my collection. I only know a couple songs by them. I'm not opposed to having something by them. So I thought, you know, I need to rescue this just because it's really nice condition. I have nothing by them. So I picked it up, kept going, got to the K's. You know, of course, I'm not finding anything major. These are all, this type of store is going to be all, you know, maybe take a chance or, and I've taken a lot of chances on a lot of bands at that price. Um, well, then I run and I need to get into the K's and I'm like, oh, the Knack. I have nothing by the Knack. It's not the, you know, my Sharona album. It's one of the other ones, which I have no idea. I've never listened to anything. I mean, my band has played my Sharona over the years. I know whatever the two or three big hits by them are, yeah, it'd be neat to have some Knack in my collection. And I know nothing about them. Who knows? This might be a gem, you know. Looked at it. Wow, it's in really good condition. So I put that in my stuff. Oh, another Knack album. Okay, another again, not the Mushroom album. <laughs> um, so two Knack albums that are some of the more, I guess, obscure stuff as far as I'm concerned. Okay, well, there's my three records. So there. And I'm only in the Ks, and so I'm still kind of looking. By the time I get down to a couple letters down, I start talking myself out of it. You know, I've got to be more intentional with my buys. I just don't need this... Hey, let's check it out. This would be neat to have. So I put them back. No, I haven't even made it. You know, I'm probably no further than the G's or whatever by this point. And I put them back. And I keep looking. At this point, I'm content with just, I'm just going to go out here empty-handed because I'm not going to really find anything between here and the end of the row. Another guy comes in. I don't know, but he's starting to pick up stuff. And here's my mind. And, you know, everybody thinks differently, of course. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I put my records back. If he buys them, it's meant to be. I'm not supposed to have them. If he doesn't buy them and I find them later, maybe. So that's my mentality. And I keep looking. Well, then I get all the way to the A's and I'm like, boom, Aerosmith. I never find Aerosmith in the wild. And when I do, if I do, they are usually beat up pretty bad. Plus, I never find anything, you know, from the second phase, the, the 80s and onward, or, you know, their return. Um, honestly, I, you know, I like Aerosmith. I've never owned anything. I have Toys in the Attic, you know, on CD. I've never been a big fan, never collected a lot of their stuff. Don't have anything by them. I did buy that Record Store Day album a couple months ago, so that was like their demos. That was my first Aerosmith vinyl. I have to buy this. I'm like, okay, well, now I have to buy two more. I'm going to go back and get that first one I saw. What? That guy, that he's got it in his hand. So I'm in the A's. I'm looking down there to the M area, and I see he's picked up the album that I put back. The one of the two. The Knack, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I could always get the Knack. Do I really want the Knack? I should have got that one, and now that guy's got it. Oh, well, but I got to get this. So now I got to find two more albums. So, and in this case, you know, um, the album cover you can see is is all chewed up. Well, yeah, it's on this side. It's all backwards because it's done with mirrors. It's chewed up, but you know, the vinyl itself was in nice condition. No marks, no scratches. So, okay, I got to rescue that, and I need some Aerosmith in my collection. So, now 
I'm going and I'm looking. I go around and I start looking in the you know contemporary Christian music for stuff. I start flipping through a little bit of the jazz. This guy over there is picking up all kinds of albums. I'm thinking, well, he's got what I wanted. I guess I'll just be content. So I go back and I start looking in that newly received items again. A lot of show tunes and stuff. Your typical thrift store stuff is what I'm seeing a lot of. But then I'm like, but the one right on the front, I'm like, well, you know, okay. Now I'm back to the whole knack mentality of, you know, that'd be neat to have. It'd be neat to check out. I have nothing by them. I only know certain songs by them. Let's get it. I've never actually seen this album. So, and a Jay Giles album. Now, I've seen a lot of Jay Giles in the wild. I've never, I'm not a big Jay Giles fan. You know, Freeze Frame, I had that album back in the day. That was it. I'm, you know, centerfold, pop, 80s stuff. Not opposed to them. Would love to get their some of their classic stuff. And I thought, well, here's one of their classic stuff. So I've never seen this album before. I'm not a big fan as far as collecting stuff. So I don't know all of their records. But I had never seen this one before in the wild. Never run into it. Let's check it out. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, 1974. Okay, so this is going back way before the 80s stuff. Um, no, it must have got lost. Okay, well, you know, I know that song. So not a total loss. There's two. There's two. Let's, let's you know, and... and um, I checked it out, you know, to, again, make sure, you know, the insert was in nice condition. The album, nice and shiny. I've never seen the Yellow Atlantic label before, but that's just my limited knowledge. Everything about it looked pretty, a little split there, but who cares? Okay, I grabbed that. Still looking, still looking, still looking. Okay, well, again, back to that knack mentality of that'd be neat to have. Now, the reason I picked this up, the Moody Blues, Seventh Sojourn. Scott Waters mentioned the other day, somebody had sent him uh, some Moody Blues paraphernalia, and he mentioned how he's never got into them, never, never knew much about them, never owns anything by them, and I'm like, well, neither do I. He is. He was describing them as, as prog rock, which I guess I never, I don't know what they are. I mean, I know the songs, you know, the few songs that they got, Nights in White Satin, things like that. Um my band plays Story in Her Eyes. Uh, it's a great song, but to me it's more like eh, Southern rock, rock, just classic rock. Never thought of them as a prog rock band, didn't know. I'm like, okay, hey, here's a chance. You know, for $4, let's grab. You know, it's in, it's in good condition, a little goofy there, a little split there in the middle. But, hey, what the heck, this is 1972. I own no Moody Blues. Let's get it. You know, I need three albums, so let's get it. So I got it. I'm not, Then I'm looking, and I'm like, okay. You know, the inside cover has a little tape on it, but it's in fairly good condition. And I pulled the record up. And I'm like, wow. I mean, shiny, new feeling. I'm like, okay. Again, you don't find albums usually of these bands. There are certain bands I find in the wild. I would say Moody Blues. I don't look a lot at them, but there are certain bands I find in the wild that I just never, they're never in good condition. Three Dog Night. Bachman Turner Overdrive. It just seems like every time I see these type of classic rock bands, uh, 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 Graham Funk. It's like every time I get these, I mean, people love them, I guess. The album is all ring wear and all worn out. And then the record itself usually is all scuffed and dirty and horrible. So I never buy that stuff. And that's usually why I don't even look at them anymore. But this one I picked up and it looked at. So now I'm done. I got three. This guy that's been buying all these records is finally going for the checkout. So now I went back to really reconsider the knack. You know, I'm like, well, maybe I could. Now they're all $4 a piece. Let's reconsider the neck. And so I'm over there looking in the K's, kind of looking. Do I know any of these songs? Do I reconsider? The guy has now went to the front to cash out. Lo and behold, he comes walking back over to my, where I am, and he puts the album back. That The one, only one album he put back was the one album that I wanted, and I grabbed it. So Mountain, Nantucket, Sleigh Ride. Again, I don't own any mountain. You know, everybody knows Mississippi Queen and, and, and a few other hits by them. Leslie West, I guess, what was it? He recently passed away. It's got minor ring wear and, you know, it's a gatefold. Again, 1970. So it's on the Bell label, which to me, that's, the you know, that's Partridge Family. But anyway, I know they were big in the 70s. Um, I can't say I recognize any of the songs. I don't know. I'm like, okay. And then I'm, I'm like, okay, let's check out the record. When I checked it out the first time, this is why I grabbed it. I mean, it is shiny, new-looking goodness. Not a mark, no dirt, no marks, no scuffs. Again, it's a rescue mission. And I'm like, 
I cannot believe this guy. He had a stack of records. Went to the counter, turns right around. I don't know if he ran out of money or what. He came back and put one album back, and it's the one of the first albums I picked up that I wanted. I grabbed it. Now I got four albums. I didn't want to put the other ones back because I figured I already convinced myself into getting them. I didn't buy the knack. That would have been two more, but you know, I, I was content. I grabbed this. Woohoo! Score! Checked out. Got it. So anyway, um, I've given most all these a listen, and um, I'm still not sure how I would classify Moody Blues. Not sure if I would put them in the prog rock category. They're kind of, a, on this particular album, you know, fairly, not mellow, but, you know, just in that zone. So, anyway, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I haven't listened to the entire thing. And uh, the Jay Giles Band, of course, is very, very much reminds me of the 70s style. Um, you know, they got some bluesy stuff in there. Typical stuff that I would expect. Uh, kind of a mix for me of like uh, Blues Brothers and Huey Lewis uh, mixture of that kind of stuff that I like. So, anyway, yeah, great stuff. Grabbed the one that I wanted for and out. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Anyway. That's all for now. I just wanted to share that little story. Thanks for listening. Rock on. Rock hard.